Now, while the U.S. is ending its combat mission in Iraq and continuing its war in Afghanistan, it's also waging shadow wars in over a dozen other countries. This is a topic that we've discussed on the show before, but now comes new information. The ACLU has now challenged JSOC, the Joint Special Operations Command's right to engage in targeted killings outside of the battlefield. They're basing their challenge on the public acknowledgement of JSOC's existence by two presidents, on the acknowledgement by a presidential advisor that lists of human targets, including U.S. citizens, exist, and on an acknowledgement by the Director of National Intelligence that Yemen is a place where these targets could be, quote, gone after. But will this be a successful challenge? Or will the U.S. be able to continue treating the entire world as its battlefield? Well, joining me from Minnesota to discuss it is Jack Wright, former CIA special agent and criminal defense attorney. Jack, thanks so much for being here with me. Uh, now, first of all, you recently were in Iraq. So I just want to know from your perspective, from what you saw, does that look like it's anywhere near over to you? No, it's, it's not over. I mean, with Vice President Biden talking about how much better it is, He's correct. If I take you back to 2006 when I was in western Baghdad, out to the west, things were a disaster. So in comparison, yes, I guess we can give it two thumbs up. But if we think about the number of people who continue to die, the number of problems that still exist, and frankly, there's actually no government in place. It is not formed since the elections in March. I mean, we still have very, very serious problems. The Americans may want to wipe their hands of this, but let's be realistic now. They can't. We certainly have an obligation based upon our decision to invade the country. We can't simply walk away now because we've decided, well, we're bored with it. You know, uh, an interesting point that I heard earlier, I interviewed uh, an Iraqi journalist on tonight's show, and, uh, you know, she brought up the idea, too, that uh, Vice President Joe Biden, President Barack Obama, they're not going to be calling this a, a victory, of course, the end of the combat mission, but in essence, they are saying that this is a victory in the sense that uh, al-Qaeda has now been defeated in Iraq, which she, as an Iraqi, uh, found very ironic and frustrating because, well, al-Qaeda was never in Iraq in the first place uh, to, to begin with before we got there, and now al-Qaeda clearly is not out of Iraq, and they are still there, in fact. So, you know, do you think that perhaps we may have uh, made things worse for ourselves by going into Iraq? I think in many ways we have, because we have to think about this in a much larger context than just Iraq. Our decision to go into the country has had a massive rippling effect across the entire Middle East, with more than 1.2 billion Muslims in the world who saw that invasion in the first place and all of the promises and all of the justifications which came to naught. And then we look at what happened afterward in Afghanistan. What it really shows, what it really highlights is sort of incredible arrogance in one sense, but also the futility of some of the things that we have done. And now to massage this and to wrap this in an American flag and put a little bow on it and say, our work here is done, it's almost laughable if it weren't so sad for the thousands of dead Americans and the hundreds of thousands of dead Iraqis, let alone Afghanistan. Uh, now, well, the thing is, you know, we can say that this also is largely a distraction from the fact that, well, the war in Afghanistan is nowhere near over, and from the fact that, you know, there are these shadow wars that the U.S. is fighting in uh, many other countries. You know, the fact that JSOC, even the CIA, can fight al-Qaeda wherever they feel like it, be it Somalia, be it Yemen. Um, so, you know, did you ever think that Barack Obama would be the president to really expand this, this shadow war? I think about a, an opportunity I had. I was, I was in the White House, in the press room, when we were talking about what was going on in Abu Ghraib. And I still recall covering this president throughout the campaign as he was talking about transparency and the need for the American people to understand what is going on. And then I was in the room at the White House when Gibbs comes out, his spokesman came out and he said, well, we've decided that all of those photos from Abu Ghraib, all of the other evidence, which is already out there in the Middle East, would not be released here. So all of a sudden, the new boss is a lot like the old boss. That gave me my first hint. But if you talk about the targeted killing program, this is something that I think is even more significant, more seditious potentially because of what it means. The people that you can kill are not just on a battlefield in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. The argument seems to be that the Americans can kill anybody, any place they want, including Americans without transparency, without due process, 
and we simply have to believe that the Americans are doing the right thing, as if they've ever made a mistake. We wouldn't say that, would we? <laughs> <laughs> now, Jack, uh, you know, I brought up that the ACLU is actually challenging, uh, challenging them on this issue. Do you think that they have any chance of succeeding here legally? This is going to be very, very difficult because really what you need is you need judges to be able to step up and respond. I mean, one of the things we have seen, especially after 9-11, was that it's almost as if the judiciary fell in line behind this argument from the government, and we've seen this again and again and again, that they argue national security and the judiciary simply falls away, caves in, bends over for the executive branch. So we have seen this so many times, it makes this absolutely an uphill battle. But if we think about what the ACLU was arguing, what they're saying is if we think about somebody like uh, Alaki, again, this American-born clerk, he's an American citizen who is someplace in, in Yemen right now. And the argument is this. He is doing some bad things, apparently, but what the Americans have decided is they are going to kill him, not on a battlefield, not because he is coming after the Americans right now, but because they say that he is a bad guy. More importantly, they're not going to provide any transparency to clarify why he is. They're also not going to provide him any due process. And believe it or not, originally, they were arguing that he was al-Qaeda. And since he was working with al-Qaeda, the ACLU couldn't even respond on his behalf to the U.S. government because that would be benefiting al-Qaeda. So they actually had to go to the White House, go to Justice Department, and say, would you let us at least make this argument? Now, imagine how much you have an uphill battle to go beyond that to say, why are you killing him, and stop. So the chances, well, are going to be difficult. Yeah, it's definitely uh, very disturbing, but I hope that the ACLU succeeds here. Jack, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure.